So I think um, you know there's a lot of talk about analytics and you know big data, and there is a fundamental difference, right? That analytics and analytical thinking requires a cultural shift in the way you track and plan um, your activities, um, and those changing thought processes um, are based on where we are today, right? Most schedules and uh, organizational is very, very reactive, right? We, we have standard reports, you know, people fill in data, um, they report that information in status meetings. There's usually a leader or a project leader who tries to marshal and corral that information um, and present it in a succinct fashion during weekly meetings or, you know, bi-weekly meetings and try and drill through and find out what data is relevant to the overall scope of the project versus you know, very individualized technical problems that a group may be facing. And then of course there's this whole notion of semi-automated data gathering where you're really requiring or you know, relying on the engineers to themselves populate this data and present it to you. And as you know, people will tend to color that data because they don't necessarily understand the full significance of it in the overall project concept. Oh, project context, and they only want to present you know, the data that they feel is relevant, but the truth is, you know, uh, is much deeper than that. Now, just because you gather all the big data doesn't automatically mean that you know, you're no longer reactive. Oh, you know, I've built a big data system, I grab all this stuff in, and now suddenly I've gone, you know, I'm still reactive. Well, the, the transition from reactive to proactive is difficult, right? You just, you don't get it out of the box. Um, Forward-looking decisions, and I think Simon pointed that out, really need new types of analysis. And that analysis is typically continually changing. You have different constraints as you go through your project life cycle, and then different constraints between projects, because they can have you know, different flavors. You know, in a typical semiconductor company, you've got different flavors of, of devices, and IP is being delivered you know, through different mechanisms. So the key is you know, to have the ability to keep writing analysis um, and identify the key indicators and drill down deeper and find out exactly what's going on. So in order to do that, you really need a powerful framework. And what are those framework challenges? The first one is that we're talking about very, very large amounts of unstructured data. This is machine data on all the jobs that ran, but unless you can correlate that to actual events um, that, you know, that drove the creation of that data, it's very difficult to write a good model. And that's where uh, you know, a very well-structured SCM repository can help drive that correlation. And it's also very important to remember that you know, project leads, you know, they're not database gurus, they're not you know, data scientists. What they want you know, is something that's usable. They don't want to have to train off you know, some, some group of people to run those analytics for them. They want to be able to, to do it in a, in a fairly scalable fashion. So in terms of framework challenges, <clears throat> making you know, big data usable requires a certain level of optimization. Yes, you do need to grab a lot of your data and, and put it into the system, but you also want to make sure that's optimized and you don't put a lot of wasteful stuff in there because it just becomes harder you know, to, to find that, that needle in the haystack. So you, know, you need you know, optimization, you need some notion of predictive modeling, and there's always you know, a fair amount of statistical analysis, and usually that statistical analysis is based on historical trends or historical precedents that allow you to build your base model. And once you have your base model, then you can extrapolate it based on your complexity and your scaling factors. And the key here is um, that vendors need to provide that value, and most of that value comes through providing library functions so that you can compute the, the metrics that you want um, and provide easy programmatic interfaces so that not everyone has to be a you know, database expert or a, or a data scientist. And then provide you know, presentation layers so that visualization, which is a very big part of analytics, um, comes up very, very quickly. So, you know, as you know, Simon has mentioned, that you know, the tape out prediction you know, comes after at least one design. Um, and you, know, you get actionable information, and accuracy improves over time. It's not you know, some magic thing that you're going to press a button um, you know, and, and, and get a result from a tool. Now, another big aspect of, um, of big data analytics is IP path prevention. Um, we see these trends of data leaking out from organizations. 
And typically what we find is that it's not one record that's stolen or two records that's stolen, it's four million records or 10 million records, right? And the key there is that analytics can enable you to stop those kind of mega breaches because when you have a vulnerability, the typical time to find that vulnerability is about 280 days. And in general, that vulnerability is never found by you. It's found by some external organization. One of our partners did a survey, and what they found was that most of the time that information was coming from third-party agencies like the FBI, the NSA, or the CIA. And they were being told, hey, look, you know, we raided this, 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 you know, this office, or we found a set of computers, and on it, we found stuff marked, you know, your company confidential. So the key is um, to be able to prevent these mega breaches, because once you have a vulnerability, this data starts leaking out, and you want to be able to apply threat detection analytics very early on to stop uh, large amounts of data leaking out of your system. Okay, um, that's what I have. Thank you.